Sedgemoor on the Somerset levels became the setting for the conclusion of the Monmouth Rebellion. This vast, flat moorland is crisscrossed by a network of drainage ditches called Reens. The site of the final conflict between the Royalist armies and James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth's rebel army, was along the Bussex Reen, no longer in existence. On the 5th of July, 1685, the rebels, some 3,000 in number, were gathered in Bridgewater. From the church tower, Monmouth observed the Royalist garrison camped to the north side of Western Zoyland, four miles away. He also learnt that their commanding officers were billeted in the village, making the King's troops vulnerable from attack. For any chance of a surprise attack to succeed, the rebels would have to cross the moor at night. Their force consisted of 2,600 foot soldiers, 600 cavalry and four cannon, although one was defective and couldn't be used. At around 11 o'clock, Monmouth led his hotchpotch army of supporters out of Bridgewater northeastwards and then south, bypassing the village of Chedzoy and crossing the Langmore Reen. The plan was simple. His cavalry was to ride ahead, cross the upper plungeon, a ford or crossing point of the Bussex Reen to the northeast of the King's troops, and attack the sleeping garrisons in their tents, while the larger force, the infantry, were to form up and wade across the Reen and finish the murderous task. However, Keeping such a large body of men and horses quiet over the six-mile route meant the element of surprise was on a knife edge. The night was dark and misty, which hampered navigation, and a royalist scouting party stumbled upon the rebels, and a shot was fired. A messenger then fled to the royalist camp, sounding the alarm and rousing them from their cider fueled slumber. The King's troops hastened into position along the south side of the Bussex Reen, while the scouting party, who fired the warning shot, rode to protect the upper plungeon. With the element of surprise now lost, Monmouth made the best of the situation and sent his cavalry forward. It split in two. A smaller section tried to take the upper plungeon, while the larger part rode across the north side of the Bussex Reen, aiming for the lower plungeon. They never made it. Instead, they came under fire from the Royalist army on the opposite bank. The rebels' horses, being pasture and farmland animals, not military trained and unused to such noise and commotion, bolted, returning northwards. Unfortunately, the fleeing cavalry ploughed straight into Monmouth's oncoming infantry, causing further panic and disarray in the darkness and fog. One rebel commander, Captain Wade, managed to bring his battalion down to the Reen and commenced firing at the King's troops. He employed the three cannon to good effect, firing for about an hour and a half. Meanwhile, the six Royalist guns were brought into action, first knocking out the rebels' three guns and then were trained on Monmouth's foot soldiers. By 3 a.m. it was beginning to lighten. Monmouth knew he was beaten and it was only a matter of time before his men were slaughtered. Leaving his rebel force to their fate, he rode from the battlefield and took cover in the Polden Hills. At 3.30, Lord Feversham, the Royalist Commander-in-Chief, gave the order for his cavalry and dragoons to cross the reef via the upper and lower plungeons and lead the attack. 30 minutes later, he instructed his infantry to advance also. The Royalists swarmed across the Bussex Reen, reformed and swept in for the kill. By 7 a.m., the battle was over. The rebel prisoners were herded into St. Mary's Church in Western Zoyland and held there. Soon after, they were to learn their fate from the hands of the hanging judge, Judge Jeffreys, in a series of trials that became more infamously known as the Bloody Assizes. 
a memorial stone on the battlefield commemorates the 400 or so rebels who were slain during England's last pitched battle, the thousand others who were subsequently killed, and those who were transported into penal servitude.